Welcome back to our video series. This is the second part of our tutorial on onlap relations. In the last video, we showed how younger structural groups can onlap onto older elements and discussed how this can sometimes lead to elements serving dual roles, acting as both onlap surfaces and volumetric elements. This doesn't always align with the geological logic of the structural frame. Before we move on, let's take a quick look at the previous model, which represented a sedimentary basin structure. Now, let's explore a more complex example to better understand how onlap relations work. This will also give us a chance to review key concepts from the last video and explain why certain modeling choices are made. For this example, we'll create a simplified subduction zone using a new dataset. On the left, we see the bottom of the oceanic crust, called oceanic bottom, along with a second set of data points called oceanic top, which represent the top surface of the oceanic crust. This top surface is crucial because it serves as the onlap surface where the continental layers will build up. On the right, we have three elements forming the continental crust. Two of them, continental deep and continental shallow, are nearly parallel, while continental top features a slight inclination near the oceanic crust. Now, let's consider how to group these elements in the structural frame. The oceanic site has a well-defined bottom surface, but its top surface, called oceanic top, is only represented by a single point in 2D. To ensure that it dips correctly into the subduction zone, we group it with the oceanic bottom, so they are interpolated with a single scalar field. This way, the deeper layer's shape influences the top surface. On the continental side, continental deep and continental shallow are grouped together, as they share a similar geometry. Continental top, however, is placed in its own group because it behaves differently close to the subduction zone. Finally, we set the stack relation of both continental groups to onlap, ensuring that they are built up against the oceanic crust instead of eroding it. As a small bonus step, Let's add a topographic surface to our model. Using a simple NumPy array, we can create a mountain range and apply it using gp.setTopography from arrays. Now, let's compute the model and take a look at the result. We've successfully created a basic subduction zone using onlap relations. However, there are a few important things to note. The oceanic top element once again serves a dual role. The boundary surface it defines marks the top of the oceanic crust and the onlap surface for the continental layers, but its rock volume fills the space below the continental elements, since that's how the age relationships are set up in the structural frame. This dual role can make naming tricky. While grouping oceanic top with oceanic bottom makes sense for defining the onlap surface, it does not make sense for the rock volume. It is important to be aware of this behavior when using onlap relations in GEMPI. We hope you found this second tutorial on onlap relations helpful. 
If so, leave a like on this video or maybe even stop by GitHub and grant Jampai a star rating. Are there any topics you would like us to cover? Make sure to leave a comment. By subscribing you make sure to miss no informative Jampai videos in the future.